Good morning, Bethany. Welcome to worship. My name is Brenna Greenfield, and I have the delight of being your worship leader today. Welcome to our community of believers. We are Bethany Presbyterian Church, a more light congregation that embraces the LGBTQIA plus community and the leadership of so many gifted individuals who seek to humbly follow the teachings of Jesus Christ. This is a place to remember I am a child of God, holy and beloved. Please say that again with me. I am a child of God, holy and beloved. Following the recommendations set by the Presbyterian Church, we begin our gathering acknowledging whose land we're meeting on. Our church is on the land of the Coast Salish people. We honor the Coast Salish people and their elders, past, present, and their future generations. Our announcements for this morning, for those with accessibility needs, we have hearing assist devices, large print hymnals and Bibles, and bulletins available. Please see one of our wonderful volunteers in the Tech Resource Center over here at the back, uh, or an usher also at the back there, if you need assistance with any of that. Um, If you're visiting with us today, welcome. We're glad you're here. Uh, Please take a moment to fill out one of the welcome cards located at the back of the pews, uh, in the pew backs. Uh, We want to hear from you and get to know a little more about you. Uh, Please drop these in the offering plate later in the service when it is passed. Today, during the prayers of the people, uh, Pastor Ofe will pass the mic for those who wish to share their uh, prayer requests publicly. For those who would rather not, uh, please fill out a prayer card to have your request included in the weekly prayer email. You may drop your prayer request in the offering plate as well when that is passed later in the service. Uh, Also today, join us after church for coffee hour. Grab a cup of coffee or a snack and visit with the Bethany community. We'd love to have you. There's there's a lot of food out there. (laughs) It wasn't even being done set by the time I sat down, so please come eat. Uh, Also, the OPOP team will be selling uh, homemade take-home enchilada dinners. These family-style dinners will feed up to four people. Prepaid orders will be taken August 4th through the 25th. The cost will be about $35, cash and checks accepted. Orders will need to be picked up August 31st between 3.30 p.m. and 4.30 p.m. at Bethany. Enjoy the best meal in town. Uh, Bethany's annual camping expedition at the Soundview Camp and Retreat Center is Friday, August 23rd through Sunday, August 25th. We have reserved six camp RV sites for the weekend. If you would like to reserve one of these, uh, please RSVP to Amanda Grendel. Um, If you're interested in renting a cabin or discovering more about camp amenities, please visit their website. Uh, Join us for Garden Vespers this Thursday evening, July 25th at 7 p.m. in the community garden. We'll be using music from Marty Hagen's Holden Evening Prayer, which many of you are already familiar with from our Vespers during Lent. There is a Care of Creation theme for these summer services. Uh, Also, this August, on August 12th and 17th, uh, the interfaith community that Bethany is a part of uh, is participating in Paint Tacoma Beautiful led by Associated Ministries. So join us either the 12th or the 17th for a day of fun doing painting and having food. And you don't actually need to paint. They do have some positions that if you are not able to get up there and, and do some painting, that they, they have 
photography options and go around taking pictures of everyone else working. And you know, you, you don't have to be physically able to get up there and paint. So if you are interested, you can either talk to me or I believe we have some flyers where you can act, ask more direct questions of Elisa Humbert, who is their, their director of the Paint Tacoma uh, program. And I will be participating, so I hope to have some other Bethany members there. Uh, and so, let us gather for worship. Let us rise and body your spirit for our opening hymn. It is 824 in our purple hymnals. Let us sing. Buenos dias. Good morning, everyone. Let us pray. All gracious God, rock of our salvation, you have drawn us near to rest a while in your sure and solid presence. As you meet us here, filled with compassion, ready to receive our prayers and our praise, so fill us with compassion that we may follow wherever you go, ready to receive all who are in need. Amen. Amen. The scriptures teach us that there is no distinction. The scriptures also teach us that we have a high priest who has been tested as we are, and yet is without sin. As scripture encourages us, let us approach grace with boldness, and let us pray. God, good and gracious God, we confess that we run ourselves ragged. We are busy and preoccupied with so many things. We neglect to be still and know that you are God. Even our Sabbath time can be filled with busyness. Forgive us, Lord, 
for not accepting your gift and guidance of rest and restoration. Help us to put on the yoke of Jesus and walk in the way he models for us, mindful of our spiritual health and responding with compassion to the needs of our neighbors. Loving God, thank you for Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, who makes us complete in everything good so that we may do his will, working among us that which is pleasing in his sight. We pray through Jesus Christ, to whom be the ever and ever. Amen. Let us take a moment now for silence, reflection. God, who is rich in mercy, made us come together in Christ. By grace, you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. Believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven, healed, and made whole. Thanks be to God. As we have been reconciled with God, let us also take a moment to be reconciled with one another. You may either sign or say, the peace of Christ be with you, and also with you. Let us share signs of peace. So the last couple weeks have been a doozy in the world, and I thought we'd kind of stop and uh, reflect a little bit. I think you can never go wrong with more music, so we're we're packing in some more music today. Um, There's a piece, I I got introduced to this piece in college when I was working with one of the choirs, and it's just really beautiful text. It's actually a communion hymn, um, so I suppose we're doing it at the wrong time, but I think the words are just really kind of fitting for where we are right now. So I'll just invite you to listen as as Carla and I offer some music for you. Uh, Enjoy.
Trust in the Spirit's tether, for when humbly in your name, two or three are met together, you are in the midst of As disciples used to gather in the name of Christ to sup, then with thanks to God the giver, break the bread and bless the So now bind our friendship up, all our meals and all our living, make us sacraments to you, that by caring, helping, Amen. do the oh this one is this one on oh perfect we've got sound hi guys we got Micah and Ezra and Morley and Trish I didn't I say Micah and Ezra I smushed them together oh I think I just smushed them together uh we don't have Harry today sorry guys so last week we had a really good time we had 34 kiddos and some adults and we partied all week in this church and uh, there's, some, there's a sign over here of some of the things we did. There's a loving kindness sign. I'm going to um, invite you guys to check that out. There were some things that the kiddos did with Elisa, and they kind of brainstormed what are the different ways that we show compassion and loving kindness to each other. And upstairs, there were arts and crafts with Tova, and I think Carolyn Lowry helped out with that a bit. And downstairs, there was recreation. We played games and did kind of puzzles and group activities together. And then back over um, in the room where we're going to eat coffee, eat snacks for coffee hour, there was a big tent, and Elisa led people in some different mindful activities. There were stories and meditation, and even some yoga. Have you guys ever done yoga? Yeah. And in here was maybe the most fun because it was music, and there were all kinds of songs led by Morley and Trish and Gwen. And so we are going to do a couple of the songs that we did at camp. Is that okay? Will you guys do some songs with us today? Okay, so we're going to do two songs from camp. And I'm going to pass this over to Morley to help lead us in some of that music. Awesome. Okay, this song is called All of Us, and it's very repetitive, so you can join in when you, you catch on to it. Okay. One, two, ready, go. All of us, every one of us belongs in the circle of community. All of life, all that grows and
and breezes a part of our beautiful home again. All of us, every one of us belongs in a circle of community. All of life, all that grows and breezes a part of our beautiful home. And the chorus is, A-A-O-O, all of us, A-A-O-O, community. a part of a beautiful home. All of us, the young and very old, all around the world in community. All of life on the land and in the sea is a part of our beautiful home. Again, all of us, the young and very old, all around the world in community. On the land and in the sea is a part of our beautiful home. And now the chorus. A-A-O-O, all of us. A-A-O-O, community. A-A-O-O, all of life is a part of our beautiful home. Again, one last time. A-A-O-O, all of us. A-A-O-O, community. part of our beautiful home is a part of our beautiful home is a part of our beautiful home and last Sunday I was teaching all of the children the loving kindness song may I be happy mm -hmm. may I be healthy may I be safe and what really gets me this week may I be at peace and so let's do that one again here we go. May I be happy, may I be healthy, may I be safe, may I be at peace. May I be happy, may I be healthy, may I be safe, may I be at peace. May you be happy, may you be happy. May you be healthy, may you be safe, may you be at peace, may you be happy, may you be healthy, may you be safe, may you be at peace, may you be happy, may you be healthy, may you be safe. May you be at peace. And now the amens. Amen. 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 One more time softly. Amen. 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 Oh, sorry, Diane. Um, can we really quickly, if you helped out with uh, the Vacation Bible School, will you just stand up so we know kind of who was hanging out with these kids? I know Carolyn Lowry was here with us and Sally over here, and obviously Ofe was here with us. Um, so let's do a quick prayer, kiddos, okay, and then we'll let you go upstairs. Dear God, thank you for all the people who are our chosen family and help us to show loving kindness and compassion every day. Amen. Okay. Our first scripture lesson today comes from Mark chapter 6, six uh, verses 30 through 34 and 53 through 56. We'll be reading from the Inclusive Bible. 
If you wish to read along, you can find that at your Pew Bible on page 1223. Uh, Please listen now for a word of the Lord. The apostles came back to Jesus and reported all that they had done and taught. Jesus said to them, come away by yourselves to some place more remote and rest a while. For there were many people coming and going, and the apostles hadn't had time to eat. So they went away in a boat to a deserted area. The people saw them leaving, and many recognized them. So they ran together on foot from all the cities and got there ahead of the apostles. When Jesus went ashore, there was a large crowd waiting for him. And he felt compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began to teach them many things. After crossing the lake, Jesus and the disciples came ashore at Gennesaret and tied up their boat there. No sooner had they stepped out of the boat than people recognized Jesus. The crowd started hurrying about the countryside and brought the sick on stretchers wherever Jesus went. Wherever he appeared, in villages, in towns, or in the countryside, they laid down the sick in the open places, begging him to let them touch just the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched Jesus got well. A word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Open our senses and our hearts to your teachings, Lord, that we may be strengthened in our faith and equipped for ministry in your name. Amen. Our second scripture lesson today comes from the letter to the Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 11 to 22. I'll be reading from the Common English Bible, which is what's in your pews, page 1424. Please listen now for a word of the Lord. So remember that you that once you were Gentiles by physical descent, who were called uncircumcised by Jews who were physically circumcised. At that time, you were without Christ. You were aliens rather than citizens of Israel and strangers to the covenants of God's promise. In this world, you had no hope and no God. But now, thanks to Christ Jesus, you who were once so far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Christ is our peace. He made both Jews and Gentiles into one group. With his body, he broke down the barrier of hatred that divided us. He canceled the detailed rules of the law so that he could create one new person out of the two groups, making peace. He reconciled them both as one body to God by the cross, which ended the hostility to God. When he came, he announced the good news of peace to you who were far away from God and to those who were near. We both have access to the creator through Christ by the one spirit. So now you are no longer strangers and aliens. Rather, you are fellow citizens with God's people and you belong to God's household. As God's household, you are built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. The whole building is joined together in him, and it grows up into a temple that is dedicated to the Lord. Christ is building you into a place where God lives through the Spirit. A word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I remember my first love and subsequently my first heartbreak. I was 17, the first day of college, 
Walking down the hall toward the cafeteria, I saw him, this skinny little thing with messy hair and a grin from ear to ear. He was saying hello to everyone who walked past. I thought he must be a sophomore or junior. He looked so, he looked quite young, but was so approachable and comfortable in greeting people. And maybe that's what attracted me. He just seemed so kind. He introduced himself and was indeed a first year student, just like me. And we walked into the cafeteria together and became instant friends. We happened to have a class together and I couldn't help but dream, maybe this means something. <laughs> Maybe this is a sign. And over the next few weeks and months, the crush I had on him developed deeper. My feelings intensified and my heart yearned to know, does he feel the same? He lived off campus while I had a dorm on campus and my roommate was cool with him as well. So every once in a while, he would crash at our place if he didn't want to drive home after a night class and I loved it. Are you hungry? I asked. Can I make you a sandwich? Do you need to borrow some clothes for tomorrow? As that first year progressed, I found myself being more and more available to his needs and less and less attentive to my own. Willing to sacrifice my study time or limited resources like food or sleep because I wanted to stay up all night and chat with him, Spending money I didn't have to give him little gifts here and there. Making sure that he felt special, that he knew how much I cared for him. Deep down, I firmly believed that I loved him. The summer that followed, I grew the courage to tell him how I felt. And he did not feel the same way. Our text today comes from the second chapter of the letter to the Ephesians. Traditionally, this letter has been attributed to the Apostle Paul, though modern scholarship has questioned whether it may have been written by one of his colleagues or later followers. It's possible that Paul used a different scribe, and so the writing style is just different. We do know that Paul spent a considerable amount of time in Ephesus, but we are not clear if he knew this congregation personally. It's estimated that the letter was written sometime between the years 54 to 63 Common Era, maybe from Ephesus itself or Rome or Caesarea. The language of the letter implies that it was written for a predominantly non-Jewish audience, but written by Jesus-following Jews. The difference between the author and the recipients is clear in the almost vulgar, by today's standards, vulgar language concerning male genitalia. As I understand it, people who were born of the flesh or Gentiles, the text adds the uncircumcised. They were born that way. While being Jewish, or specifically a Jewish male, was something that you became through this act of circumcision. And women who were considered property of men are automatically considered part of the group. We as Christians also practice this ideology. It just looks very different. In baptism, we die to our old selves and rise again new in Christ. There is an act of taking something away in order to make room for something new that initiates us into the community. The problem then is that there becomes this constructed division between those who are circumcised and those who are not, those who are baptized and those who are not. And Paul, or whoever our author is, calls on the community to recognize that those physical divisions should no longer exist. Using the language of blood, just like there would be blood at a circumcision, the act of cutting, the act of dying, has been done by Christ for all people everywhere. And so we are to come together. A huge debate that plagued the early church was about Gentiles having to become Jewish first to be considered followers of Jesus through the act of circumcision. The apostles Paul and Peter both argued that it should not be the case that the initiation into the Christian community is done 
in the giving of the Holy Spirit. And this is where our text gets really interesting. If we were to just do a surface level reading of the text, it all sounds really sweet, kind of weird, but really sweet. Very kumbaya, let's all be together and live happy ever after. But if we allow ourselves to dig a little deeper, we notice some big statements that would have been considered treason and heresy for the folks involved. The text written for a people living in the Roman Empire states very plainly that Christ is our peace. This was in direct opposition to the slogan, the Pas Romana, Roman peace. This was a 200 year period that from the outside illustrated great prosperity for Rome. And from the inside, there were a lot of revolts and soldiers were everywhere keeping the peace, keeping everyone in line. The peace offered here was from the state, the government, the emperor, and this slogan was widespread. People needed to know where their so-called peace was coming from. But the author of our text states, no, Christ is our peace. Not only is this statement treason, it's really bold, considering a pastoral aim of the letter is to bring a sense of unity to groups of people who have historically been at odds with one another. Just receiving the letter or having it read out loud at a worship service could bring with it great danger to the hearers. Bless you. And yet, this letter has survived. And it's canonical to our text. That should mean something to us. We could also receive this letter as the Jewish group boasting a little bit about how they were already close to God. And now the Gentiles, which is us, are being called into that same space. Surface level, very much, you are now welcome to be in our space with us. Come on in. But the author spends a little time discussing temple logic and states, Christ is building you into a place where God lives through the Spirit. This is blasphemy. For the folks of ancient Israel, there was only one temple, and it's in Jerusalem. That is where God dwells. And no one except specific priests could ever enter the Holy of Holies, the inner chamber of the temple. Very few had access to direct communication with God, very few. And now, Gentiles are not only being included into the family of faith, but all people, Jew and Gentile, are told that they not only have direct access to God, but that God is dwelling within us. We are a temple for God. This was written down and circulated and read out. This was blasphemy. And it survived. And it's canonical to our text. A challenge that we experience as Christians, as members of a community, not so different from the folks at Ephesus, is that we want to be part of something. And hearing that we are welcome, we want to learn everything we need to be in order to fit in, to be accepted, to keep that which we just obtained. We used to be aliens without hope, the text calls us, but now we're not. Perhaps we want to make sure that we don't become aliens again. We might fear losing out, experiencing rejection, or maybe I wonder if we are willing to reject parts of ourselves because maybe we're a little desperate for attention. The Christian church has told us over the centuries that we are loved and that we are to erase ourselves or parts of ourselves in order to be worthy of that love. I am still very good friends with that guy 
22 years later, I cringe at how our relationship began, or more importantly, how I tried to buy his affection. He was kind, and that was something I wanted to hold on to and cherish. I was taught that to be a good person, a good Christian, I had to sacrifice myself, my time, my energy, my resources, put other people before myself in most circumstances. In contrast to being a more self-centered person, I guess that's a good idea. Except there is a question of motivation. Are we limiting ourselves or becoming different versions of ourselves in order to obtain something, to keep something? I wonder if that is a contradiction to the gospel. Jesus tells us to love our neighbor as ourself. This is a statement of equality. We are to love ourselves and our neighbor equally. Do not love your neighbor more than yourself. Do not love yourself more than your neighbor. If we are not meeting our needs because we're giving everything away, we are not honoring the child of God that we are. If we are hoarding our abundance, whatever abundance that is, we are not honoring the child of God our neighbor is. I wonder if there is a call for us to not only learn, but live out healthier boundaries, to recognize who we are in relation to and separate from one another while honoring the whole body of Christ. The text tells us we are a dwelling place for God. Last week, we pushed ourselves by asking if we believe we are children of God. Do we believe we are holy and beloved? And now we are invited to consider, do we believe that God dwells within us, in our neighbors? If God dwells within us, What does that mean about our inherent goodness? Our inherent enoughness? The permission we have to just exist without having to buy someone else's affection. And if I may push us just a little bit further, It appears that God is doing so much work to get our attention. Looking a little desperate there, Yahweh. Or maybe. Or maybe God is actually exemplifying what healthy boundaries look like. Tells us we're good and worthy. Tells us we don't have to put on a show of empty prayers or sacrificial rituals that we don't need to cut parts of our bodies or our inner self in order to be accepted by God because God already accepts us. And God lets us decide if we want to have a relationship with them. God shows up but doesn't chase. If we want a relationship, one is offered. If we don't, Our lives continue, and the world keeps spinning. And God stays God. Amen. Our hymn of response for today is in your songs for the Holy Other. And it's a little bit on the tricky side, so we're going to take it a little slow. And I'll just invite you, uh, if you would rather just listen, or if you want to listen to the first couple verses and join in as you kind of understand the song a little bit more, uh, it is hymn number 35 in your songs for the Holy Other. Actually, it's 36. There's two different versions. That's interesting. Uh, So hymn 36, let us rise, embody your spirit. And uh, sing our hymn of response, Rise Up. I love this text. (laughs) 
Rise up today and stand as one in love and unity. Let's recognize each child of God created beautifully. Engraved upon God's loving hands, each one of us by name. Completely known and loved by God, each beating heart the same. Rise up, rise up in love and unity. Reach out to all humanity, for we define the church. May we look inward at the heart to see each person's worth. Our loving kindness brings great hope to those in deep despair. All to be the light of Christ, a beacon everywhere. Rejoice, rise up in love and unity. For some the day has now arrived, the truth no longer hides. The chains of hopelessness and fear replaced by joy and pride. May we rise up together strong, embracing human hearts, proclaiming God's great love for all with freedom to impart. Rise up, rise up in love and unity. Receive God's love that never fails, no ridicule or blame. Love that will not let us go, an everlasting flame. Regardless of identity or sexuality, Christ died for all and welcomes all into eternity. You may be seated. In our lives as stewards, the gifts we offer, time, talent, and financial resources are holy gifts. They are symbols of love and signs of grace that are offered out of joy and devotion. These gifts are not dues to be paid or entrance fees to be offered. They are gifts of love, made in response to our understanding of Christ's great love, which was offered for us. As a structure must be built on a solid foundation, so this community is built upon the presence of Christ. Walls that divide should not be found here, but only the materials of life abundant, peace and justice, love and compassion. Let us find our home in Christ, even as Christ makes his home in us. Then let us follow to the places where life is threatened, ever oriented to Christ, our cornerstone. And I invite Marsha to come speak. <laughs> I'm often confused. Um, my name is Marsha Johnson, for those of you who don't know me. And this is a moment for discipleship. Well, it may have been a few decades ago. I still remember the angst of my teenage years, worrying about spitting in, self-doubt, and a hit to my self-esteem. Pretty ordinary, and I was lucky. I had a lot of support and love from both my family and community. For LGBTQIA plus youth, that is not always the case. Here are some statistics from the 2022 National Survey on Youth Mental Health. 45% of LGBTQIA youth seriously considered suicide in 2021. Nearly one in five transgender and non-binary youth attempted suicide, and LGBTQIA youth of color reported higher rates than their white peers. LGBTQ youth who felt high social support from their family reported attempting suicides at a less than half the rate of those who felt the low or moderate support. 
Fewer than one in three transgender and non-binary youth found their homes to be gender affirming. 75% of LGBTQIA youth reported experienced symptoms of anxiety. 58% of LGBTQIA plus youth reported experienced symptoms of depression. It's heartbreaking, isn't it? 60% of LGBTQIA youth who wanted mental health care in 2021 were not able to get it. Oasis Youth Center was formed in 1985 by a group of concerned community members who wanted to help LGBTQIA youth cope with discrimination and find support. They remain the only organization in Pierce and surrounding counties responding to the needs of queer youth. Their mission statement reads, Oasis transforms the lives of queer and questioning youth by creating a safe space to learn, connect, and grow. A partial list of the activities and services that Oasis offers includes every Thursday, they have a community dinner and a check-in or a peer-to-peer -peer discussion about what is going on for each participant. The first Friday of every month, youth can join a peer-led conversation in an open space to discuss relevant topics in the world and everyday life, which right now is tough. The first Friday of every month, youth can join a peer, or the, yeah, the first Friday of every month, month the youth can, oh, I rubber-grid that, sorry. <laughs> second Friday, I get really emotional about this. The second Friday of the month, they dive into queer poetry and explore the power of words in a safe, inclusive space. The third Friday, month is open or Oasis, Oasis Peer Education Network, and they discuss topics like human trafficking, sexual assault pre prevention, and healthy relationships. The fourth Friday is Queer Youth Rock, which is in collaboration with the Tacoma Youth Symphony, Symphony Association. Every Tuesday, they have a Q-Tip Ock Night, which is queer, transgender, intersex people of color. They also have an art night, a game night, and there's yoga on Saturdays. They have leadership programs and a leadership summit and even a queer prom. They offer 30 hours a week of scheduled activity and have appointments available for earlier in the day if needed. They provide a safe space for queer and questioning youth. They foster leadership. They state on their website that their goal is to go, go beyond support for survival. They aim to cultivate accessibility pathways for youth to thrive authentically. Yeah, never mind. They provide a safe space supporting atmosphere and community acceptance. Personally, I think they also save lives. To find out more, please visit their website at oasisyouthcenter.org. There's opportunities to volunteer, and there's things you can do to support this very worthy organization. Thank you. And you can support them financially as well. <laughs> we do, we do. This is, this is part of the, the organization that we here at Bethany support every year. So you can also, if you want to do more, can. And there's all sorts of opportunities to serve. Thank you so much. Let us pray. Holy God, three in one, creator, son, and Holy Spirit, we praise you for your goodness and your everlasting loving kindness. With the power of your word, you created the world and everything in it and fashioned us in your own image. In your word made flesh, you lived among us, taught us your way, and reconciled us to you. Through your living word, you continue to call us to obedience and to service in the power of your Holy Spirit. Thank you, God, for the claim you put on our lives in baptism and the call to follow you throughout life. We pray for the wisdom of your son's teachings to guide us in our actions, in what we say and do as followers of Jesus. May we always say and do what he has taught and shown us in his own life. God of the beloved, hear our prayers. I will come out now into the community to hear and receive your joys and concerns.
And whoop, well, there we go. Uh, so requesting prayers for finding a doctor quickly for my mom um, for surgery this next week. Yesterday, we had been up in Bellingham visiting family. Um, and we went for a day hike. And she ended up twisting her ankle, falling, and breaking her left arm. Um, so we spent like six hours in the ER up in Bellingham yesterday. Um, but she, she's doing OK, pain-wise is manageable and all that. But she, they couldn't get it quite as aligned as they need it to be. So she'll have to have surgery. So we're, we're working on scheduling that. So prayers, you have to find the right doctor quickly and for, for quick healing. Thank you. God of the beloved, hear our prayers. Well, I, I'm uh, a dear friend of Bethany, Carolyn Crane, died last night in, in her sleep very peacefully. And as you know, she's been coming faithfully, even with her Parkinson's, taking a toll. But by last Wednesday, she really couldn't eat or swallow. And so by her choice, she didn't want a feeding tube, and she got to make the choices that she wanted. And Lori, her daughter, got the kids to come. And as you know, her sister was here from the Midwest last week with us. So prayers. Uh, she loved all of you, and she loved Bethany for many years and sang in the choir. Uh, so prayers for Carolyn and her family, Lori. Uh, so anyway, we've lost a dear friend. God of the beloved, hear our prayers. As uh, Pastor Ophi was uh, giving his sermon, I reflect, reflecting on uh, who the others were about 35 years ago in which a number of us were in this congregation and uh, definitely the other and unfortunately continue to be uh, are gay and lesbian people, bi, bisexual, transgendered, and so on. Um, but my joy is that uh, in, in the midst of the fear that we had in recognizing that, yeah, we were discriminating, um, we were able to make some progress and um, feeling really blessed that there's so many different kinds of uh, folks represented in this congregation now, even though we have a long way to go, unfortunately, um, in which so many other folks in our, in our nation can't accept the God's truth um, that we're all loved. And in that um, line, thought, um, my particular concern is for the Palestinian people in Palestine, um, very much oppressed by folks who should know better, and um, that they will be able to, out of all this war and destruction, continue to be a proud people, advocating um, across the world for themselves and their right to a statehood. God of the beloved. My thoughts and prayers are um, uh, thankfulness and gratefulness to God for giving me the opportunity to have been involved in Gala 2024 in uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota, where 7,000 LGBTQIA plus folks got together to be joyful and to cry and to express their support for one another. Mm -hmm. It was a magical, magical time and I, will, I have been transformed by it. It is to be able to sing for, those, for that group of people and to be part of that group of people gives me such joy. God of the beloved. Um, our 
our dear sweet dog Shadow um, developed a really serious eye problem, um, and he this week on Wednesday needs to have his eye removed. So oh, pray that he heals quick and can adjust to the cone. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm sure it's going to be emotional for me too God of the beloved Hear our prayers. I have a friend that uh, I, I see her once, once a year uh, when I'm doing Santa and she works for a company called uh, First Family over in Gig Harbor our family first, family first in Gig Harbor. And she wasn't around last year, but uh, she wasn't there. And they, because of HIPAA violations, the owners couldn't let me know what happened. Well, she contacted me this past week and she has been battling cancer for a year and a half and it's still spreading. So uh, they, they've got her on a new chemo and all of you that know about chemo, it's basically poison in your body. So just prayers for her. Her name is Kathinka. She's from Dutch. She's a, and, uh, but uh, really, really nice lady. Prayers for her. God of the beloved. Hear our prayers. I'm Marley. I'm still just so joyful with uh, the outcome of Vacation Bible School. And so Trisha and I have done it now for three years. Every year I've asked, hey, are there any kids from the Sherman School, which just happens to be a block away? First year, no one. Second year, no one. But this year, there were five or six Sherman kids. And I asked one, I said, so what brought you here? And he said, well, my mom saw the sign, and then she told all her friends to come. <laughs> and so I was very excited about that. I was also excited as I talked to each child. They were from all over Tacoma. I mean, I was stunned. There was a Blix kid, a Stanley kid, Geiger, Bryant, Franklin, all over the map. Last year, we had 24. This year we had 34, and so it was pretty exciting. And I, I just want to thank everyone that helped, and also prayers for those 34 kids. God of the beloved, hear our prayers. I'm traveling to Holden this week. Um, yeah, I made it three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> My prayer is that um, traveling safety for me, I'm going alone. And prayers for Evan. God of the beloved. Hear our prayers. Jeff's first parish was a three point parish in Eastern Oregon. And last night we found out that one of the small towns uh, monument had to evacuate because of fire danger. Mm -hmm. So I ask for prayers for monument and everywhere where people are struggling just to continue on with their lives because of climate change. God of the beloved. Hear our prayers. So two things. Um, BBS was incredible, and um, just prayers for all the leaders, specifically um, Elisa Sutherland, who just does such incredible work um, with, with our kids and with our adults. Um, she promptly got sick right after camp was over, so she is home resting. So prayers for Elisa that she feels better soon. Um, and then prayers of joy seven years ago. Today, Sam and I got married. We're still married. We still like each other. <laughs> um, and when we told Harry about it, he said, well, I wanted to come to your wedding. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll have to have a, another big party for Harry. <laughs> God of the beloved, your prayers. We offer these and all our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who taught us to pray. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. We're gonna, we went, we skipped some things. I'm gonna invite Brenna to come back up. Thank you. (laughs) With grateful hearts, let us bring our tithes and our offerings that we may supply the needs of the saints, overflow with thanksgiving to God, glorify God, and share generously what God has so graciously given to us. May the ushers please come forward. Let us pray. God of grace and God of glory, we thank you for your generous blessings which enrich our lives. Help us to be good stewards of all that you give. May we freely give with generous hearts, even as we have received what you have so freely given us. Jesus Christ, your indescribable gift. Amen. And now let us rise and body your spirit for our commitment song, Take, O Take Me As I Am. Take, O take me as I am, some man not what I shall be. Please join us for coffee hour after service and receive these words of benediction. May we be happy. May we be healthy. May we be safe. May we be at peace. Amen.